Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. I've been asked a few times to explain the difference between the classical forehand and the modern forehand. What does it mean that the forehand is modern? So I'll give my two cents to this topic today. I don't claim that I know everything. I'll just share my views. I researched a little bit this topic on YouTube. I found some other coaches explaining their views. So go ahead and, and look at those videos and just see if you can then paint the whole picture of what does that mean. So the difference between classical and modern forehand, if we go into details, we can lose ourselves a little bit in details because we can think, oh, that's more about the grip. Is that, you know, the classical forehand was more continental grip and the modern forehand is more semi-western or western and then we can look at the spin so before players didn't spin the ball so much they were hitting it more flat and now there's a lot of spin on the ball another way is looking at different parts of the stroke so in the old times with the continental grip the racket face was really perpendicular to the ground and players were going more like this and now many times players go like this but I would disagree that this is a modern forehand and this is classical because lots of players still play like this like Del Pocho and most of the women on WTA tour so you wouldn't want to go to them and tell them they play a classical forehand for sure they play modern game it's just that their wrist position is slightly different than this one so again if you go into details you can talk the whole day and lose yourselves but in my view there's one main difference between the classical and the modern forehand so if I try and hit one classical forehand it would look more like this so the key thing about the classical forehand is that it works more like one unit so the arm is straight most of the times and it goes more linear and the arm goes together with the body so as the body rotates the arm goes together so they go more like together and so a classical forehand is more of a rigid stroke a very firm stroke and it's just one unit moving a modern forehand we say that it's segmented so we break it down into segments and different body parts work in different at different times and so the key to the modern forehand is that through these segments we create a lot of stretches in the body in a classical forehand there's no stretch in the body everything is kind of firm and stable so there's no stretching in the body it's just more like this it's more of a pushing motion but a modern forehand is more of a stretching way of hitting the forehand so what we get by that is we get the elastic band effect we stretch the muscle and then we can snap it back so it snaps back by itself and we also add power so the main ways we create these segments in the body are we separate the upper body and the lower body so that's why there's a lot of open stance forehands because when we play open stance forehand we can turn the shoulders more than the hips and so when we do that we create certain torque in the body a certain stretch and then we can pull back these muscles that were stretched a little bit and by that we create power so that's the first segment the first separation that we create with the modern forehand many times so we play open stance then we create this stretch between the lower body and the upper body then the second stretch that we create is by rotating the shoulders forward rotating the hips forward and letting the arm fall behind so we create the separation between the body and the arm so through the shoulder so the stretch happens here in the shoulder when we go like this there's a stretch here like through the chest muscle and then we can snap back and pull we pull like this and again we create acceleration And then the third stretch that happens is the separation between the forearm and the wrist. So when we go for a forehand, if I show from this angle, when you go for a forehand, a lot of players now go like this into a drop. And then when they accelerate, 
therefore arm goes forward and the racket falls behind so they create a lot of stretch in the forearm and so the separation is between the forearm and the wrist so in the old classical forehand one good example if you want to look it up what is a classical forehand is John McEnroe so you can go on YouTube and search for John McEnroe's forehand and you will see how he plays and that there's no separation there's no movement much between the forearm and the wrist so it's just more like this but in the modern forehand in the segmented forehand we create a lot of lag and a separation between the forearm and the wrist and so this creates a stretch and acceleration so that's like the third type of accelerating like third way of accelerating the racket so again one was body and lower body upper body the second was upper body and the arm and then we also have the forearm and the wrist and so when we create all these stretches then we can really accelerate the racket head now what do we get by that we get a lot of power but with a lot of power comes a lot of risk and so the pros are doing that because they train for hours per day and for years and they learn how to control this power and they practice from ball dropping drills to dry volley drills to million drills approaching the net moving away from the net and so on so they do drills and drills and drills and drills and they learn how to control this wild very fast racket head and still keep the ball in play now if you don't have enough practice if you're a recreational tennis player then you probably don't have enough repetition in order to learn how to control this very fast wild racket head and keep the ball in play so if you try to copy and imitate the pros you can do that you will create a lot of power but you're going to miss a lot of shots and as you know tennis is a game of errors not a game of winners at least on the recreational level and so really trying to copy the pros and like studying what is the modern forehand and playing twice a week is not going to work for you because you don't have enough practice so that's why I also don't teach a very complex way of accelerating the wrist I prefer a more stable way of of uh, teaching how to how to use how to drop the racket and again it's not a classical way it's it's what Del Potro uses it's what Sharapova uses it's what Radek Stepanek uses and they can all hit very good forehands so it doesn't mean that this is somehow an inferior forehand it's just more stable and more secure so what can you take out of the modern forehand that the pros are doing and apply to your game I don't think you should uh, work on the second segment a lot or pay attention where the players rotate and their arm legs I think that can be problematic I think it's much better to feel that when your body rotates your arm is going together with it what you can do though is to try and play open stance sometimes and try and feel the separation between the hip rotation so my hips have rotated this much but my shoulders have rotated this much so I create torque in my body so this is one way you can apply the modern forehand technique and another way is that you want to feel some wrist lag so don't have your wrist very stiff while you're hitting but try to feel how the racket falls into place by itself when you have a little bit looser wrist and you go like this and the wrist will just fall back and I've explained that in one of my videos before so I'll give you a link just click on the card and you can see how I teach that and how you can develop the wrist leg again I don't recommend that you exaggerate with that and you go like this and really flip the racket because it becomes a very complex forehand so I much more recommend that you go like this in the forehand drop and then as you rotate as you turn around your racket will fall back a bit more and you will create this racket lag and wrist lag and from here you can still accelerate really well and hit a good ball here's my attempt to play forehands with a more classical style what I'm trying to do is to keep everything more firm and rigid 
While I felt that my wrist was much more firm than usual when I played, I still see now in the video that my wrist is more loose, for example, than what John McEnroe and Rod Laver are doing with their wrist. It basically doesn't move at all for them. The rest is fine, I'm not creating a stretch between lower and upper body since I play mostly neutral stance. I'm not lagging my arm behind as it moves forward together with the body and I'm hitting the ball quite flat with a simple movement. As you can see this forehand works just fine and I'll show you in a minute or two how I even hit a passing shot with it and why I have some skill with this simple technique. The modern forehand technique that I normally use creates more stretches and legs between different body segments and is therefore much more effortless and yet more powerful. To me it feels like throwing the racket into the ball rather than pushing against it which is what the classical forehand feels like. I allow my body to stretch before the acceleration forward which is what most rack players do not do. They do exactly the opposite. Namely, they tense up too early in the expectation of a hard collision of their racket with the ball. At least that's how they perceive it. So look for more relaxation and the feeling of letting go just before you hit, and your body will naturally allow those stretches to happen. Just keep in mind that you need to rally in a non-competitive situation, since you'll be making mistakes for a while before your brain reprograms the stroke. You cannot possibly learn that while playing for points. And here's why most of us coaches can still play in a very classic manner, even with a continental grip. It's because when we want to rally with the player at the net, and we don't want to hit with too much power or spin, we find it easier to just hit back with a simple classic forehand with a continental grip. We can even hit passing shots with it, so it can't be that bad. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to Field Tennis YouTube channel for more videos coming in the near future.